Hey everybody, sorry about that. Uh, my streaming software crashed. Uh, hopefully it doesn't do that again. All right, going back to Illustrator. Okay, so essentially what I did was I created one line here and I duplicated it a few times, but also used the transform tool to uh, rotate it 120 degrees and I did that twice. And what I'm gonna do is just connect these so it makes like this Y shape. And fun little tidbit in Illustrator, if you hit Control Y, um, you can get a more precise uh, view of your lines here. So I know that they are connected. Okie dokie. And I'm just gonna do, put one of these here, put this here. I guess you can probably start to figure out what I'm making. these I need to duplicate one more of these duplicate another one of these oops and this is a shortcut that I use a lot in Illustrator is when I have a item selected and I hold down the alt key um, I can duplicate it when I drag it with the move tool, with the direct select tool. And that's a pretty great little button there because that's pretty universal for all Adobe programs. Cool, I've made a cube. And I'm sorry if I lost some people. Righteous. So yeah, sweet, we've made this cube. Um, I'm going to differentiate the inside stroke with the outside stroke. So let's make this like four. And I'll make these a little bit thicker. Do like 12. Yeah, that's looking good. Cool, so we have this pretty sweet little box made. I'm gonna make a couple shapes and then we're gonna get into how to make a pattern with these. So I'm going to move this off to the side and just make it a little bit smaller. And I'm going to start repeating some of those processes. Cool. All right. Let's do like do it this big. This shape I'm about to make is slightly more complicated, so bear with me. Um, gonna duplicate this, gonna go effect, distort and transform, and just and transform this 120 degrees. Let's make like, let's make like four, five of these. We'll probably need more than that, but. And now we're gonna expand that. Okay, here we go. Here we go, here we go. Any hey Arnold fans out there? All right. So now we're gonna use our pen tool and draw a line.
from the top of this of these corner pieces here and we're going to bring it down so it intersects with the center line here. Cool, cool. And I'm going to rotate this guy 120 degrees. Expand it. And I'm going to move that right there. So now that I have this piece right here, I can right click on it and go to transform and reflect. And I can get the opposite. All right, now I need to, what do I need to do? I need to move that there. I need to move this guy. Here. We're getting there. Now we need a piece that runs parallel here, and then one that moves up. And I'm just gonna move this point further there. Cool. this piece over here and then make a straight line up to here I'm gonna duplicate this by holding down alt again and move that there and we're almost there we're almost there. I can, I can feel it. All right. Let's. I'm just gonna make it so all of these corners look like that they're actually joining together and Make sure that they are. I think I moved this piece. Shouldn't do that. Now everything's connected all, all nice. Um, now we're just gonna adjust the ends of our strokes here. I'm also going to take these three pieces and I have a little bit of a problem right here. I want these three pieces in the middle here to be different than the outside. And so I'm gonna take, I'm gonna delete this for a second and take this piece over here, just duplicate it and move it like that. Okay, so these three pieces in the middle, we have this like Y shape and I just want the stroke to be like four, but the outside pieces to be much thicker. Let's give it like a 12. Yeah, that looks good. 
Oh yeah, this is uh, gonna be a super cool pattern. Pretty stoked about this guy. I'm gonna group all these together and just make them smaller. Okay, I have one more shape I wanna show you guys um, and then we can get into the, uh, the pattern making. Um, and we need, we need our ellipse tool for that. So with the ellipse tool, you can make circles, you can make ovals. Pretty easy, pretty self-explanatory. We're gonna put the stroke to like seven and we're gonna start in the center here. If we hit shift and alt, it'll make a perfect circle and it will radiate out from the center. And, and we're gonna make just a really small circle like that. And actually we want the stroke to be high. Yeah, something like that. Okay, then we're gonna do, we're gonna start in the center again. We're gonna use our ellipse tool. And we're gonna make another circle, except this time we're going to decrease the stroke. To something about like 16. So you should have this like wagon wheel without the spokes. You should have this like wheel looking thing. Um, and then we're gonna highlight both of them and go up to object and go to blend and go to make and then object blend and blend options. So blend is pretty cool um, because it blends one shape to another. And you, if you pick specified steps and let's do like four steps and hit preview. So our little circles here have a, a thick stroke and they eventually get to a thinner stroke um, evenly, which is pretty cool. You could do like s smooth color, which is, it's more for like creating gradients. Um, but we want specified steps for this one. And that's good. Cool. And that's our third shape. All right, so we've created all these shapes and all that, but like, who cares? I care. I'm gonna show you why this is cool. All right, I'm gonna get our square here. And actually I'm gonna duplicate this in case I mess up. It's always good to have like, your original off to the side somewhere. I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller. And before I do anything, I actually wanna make this stroke a little bit bigger. Let's say like seven and we'll put this at like three. All right, that looks good. So what I'm gonna do is go up to Object, Expand. I have a keyboard shortcut for that, uh, for Control E. So that's what I'm gonna do. Um, what that essentially does is it you lose the stroke and all the strokes become fills in this situation. Cool. And now what I want to do is unite all of these shapes. And so that this becomes, whoa. I don't know what just happened. <laughs> what just happened? I don't want to filter. I just want the pathfinder. Don't glitch on me, Illustrator. It glitched. Hooray. happening okay so we still have these struggle
Okay. Well, let's see here. Let's see if this works. We're just going to create a box and put that box underneath our square. And what I want to do is cut these out. And so I can create different shapes on the inside of our box here. Oh, and this is already pretty cool. Except I lost my stroke and I didn't want that. See, I don't know why I'm getting this. It's making me think that like Illustrator's bugging out. It might be one of those things where I have to quit and come back. Technology. If anyone's an Illustrator Pro out there, why am I getting these mystery shapes? That doesn't make any sense. I'm going to take my shape here. I'm going to put it into a new document. Okay, try this again. Gonna expand these. Why does it do that? You know when you like practice something over and over and then it t comes to game time and it just doesn't work the way that you want it to for some reason? It's doing that. Okay. Coffee. I'm gonna do a test here. That worked. Weird. Got this super fun shape. This is really cool. This is not what I want. I just want a, this simple block. Grr, okay. I keep getting this shape. This shape was like too complex, I guess. Let's see here. Hmm. All right. 
BRB everyone. Do I want to save this? No, you know, I'm not even gonna save it. No. Sorry for the technical difficulties. Illustrators being weird and buggy. Or at least, I don't know why it's not, it's, it's doing this. Let's try this again. Okay, so I created this before. So let's see if we can just make this work. So essentially what I was doing is I created a cube and now with this cube, um, you can change the color on all three sides, which is really nice, and we can make a pattern out of it. So let's go up to object. Let's highlight our object, go to object, uh, pattern, and make. And so what that's gonna do is bring up uh, our pattern options like right away. And we can start messing with some of these options. If we go to grid and go to brick by row, um, that's gonna give us kind of what we want. What I want is this to be like a repeating pattern and it to be seamless. Let's also make this bigger. We'll go nine by nine. And we're gonna, if there's this little box up here, it's the pattern tile tool and we want that. And we can come up to our box here. Essentially that's just, we're telling Illustrator how far apart we want our pattern to be. And we want it pretty seamless. Um, I'm kind of eyeballing it right here. You could probably do it in a more accurate way. But if it looks good, it is good in my opinion. Cool. Uh, what's also really nice here, which I think is like the coolest part is you can like change the colors on the fly. And let's do like a green and a blue. Go yellow. And then we can go up here and hit save a copy. And we're gonna call this cube pattern. I'm gonna call it four, because I'm pretty sure I've already made more of these. Cool. And now if I come up here to the top here, I can hit done and our pattern goes away and we are left with like our original cube which is all well and good um, but now if i make a big rectangle here we'll make it the size of our document of our artboard and that we can go over to our swatches and that pattern is saved in our swatches so we can use it over and over which is really nice now what I want to do is we can make this guy and make him smaller. Let's make this guy a pattern. Object, pattern, make. This one is a little bit trickier. You don't want to do brick by row because obviously this isn't going to work. That's not going to be like a seamless pattern. Uh, but if you do brick by column, that will work. And we'll get our tile maneuver guy here and just line this up. That's good. This takes a little bit of finesse and like figuring out, but it's not so bad. It's looking pretty good. I don't think it's, it's exact, but. Actually, that looks pretty good. All right, let's make more of these. Let's do like nine by nine. And again, we can, I do really like this color scheme right here, but there's not a whole lot of contrast. 
and we actually are going to want contrast with when we bring these over into Photoshop. So I'm going to do like a dark green. Let's just do a green one. A light green and like a white. Yeah, something like that. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle style. I'm going to hit save a copy. I'm going to do, I don't know what this, this pattern's called. It's almost like a T, T pattern, or is it a Y? It's more of a Y, Y pattern, turtle style. Okay. I'm going to hit done here. And I'm just, I just want to preview this real quick. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. This is probably one that we're gonna use later. Uh, I'm gonna put this over here for now. I'm gonna make one more of these. Put the stroke at like 27, not 37, 27. Cool. Let's make one more of these. Just want to make sure that these are aligned together so we can. Yeah, they are. You go to blend, make. And then option, blend, blend options. Specified steps, let's put this at four, preview it. That's pretty good, let's do three. Yeah, let's do three. Cool, let's make this a little bit smaller. And then go to object, pattern, make. Now this, we wanna do grid, Brick by row. No, we want to do brick by row. We want to make sure the brick offset is at a half. If we do like a quarter, um, it moves things over so the center of um, our circles here are lined up by a quarter width of our total circle. If that makes sense. Um, but if we do half, um, it just means like, yeah, where they're lined up, like the this circle down here will line up with the edge of our circle of our original circle cool so now let's go to our our tile mover here and let's move this up to like there and let's make the inside We need to make the insides of our circles of fill. I didn't do a fill before, so that's what I'm doing now. Cool, all right, that looks good. And now we're starting to get this like Japanese wave pattern effect. And if we come over here to overlap, we can choose which way that things overlap, which is pretty great. Uh, we want to do it like this because that's how waves work. That looks pretty decent. Let's hit done. You know what, I'm gonna hit object, expand, and I want 
want this outside. There we go. This will work now. This is going to be a lot easier now. I've made it so the outside ring has a fill. And I put it behind everything else and the rest of them don't have a fill. So I don't have to like go one by one now. Path. Alright, let's go to pattern, make. Let's try this again, except don't do that. Let's group these together. Now I'll go to pattern, make. Here we go. Now we're onto something. Digging that. Let's make these a different color. Do like a dark orange. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Now we have this cool pattern. Let's save a copy of this one. Call it Japanese wave orange. didn't want to delete that. I accidentally deleted that. Cool. Let's get one more of these and then call it good. So like, yeah, let's do that. Right, let's save a copy. Japanese wave. Let's call this one brown. Okay. Is it done? Now let's start making some of these patterns here. All right. nice is you can uh, double click on these and just adjust the pattern on the fly here. I want to move these a little bit closer to each other so we don't get any white space. And hit done. That's better. Cool. So what we're going to do is go up here to file uh, export and export as and we're going to uh, make a JPEG out of this and let's do Japanese wave brown we're gonna use make sure you click use the artboard because otherwise they'll just save everything around that we made and we don't want that um, hit OK here that's great let's do our turtle one file Export, export as, and we're gonna do a JPEG again. Let's call this Y pattern turtle colors. Use the artboard, hit export. Okay, and one more pattern. 
to our, one of our cube ones. This will be pretty good. Thought we made more cubes than this. Did we just make that one cube? save this guy actually just make that a little bit darker make this a little bit lighter cool that's what, I, what we want hit done hit file save as nope not save as export so many different things Photoshop, just save as. Illustrator, you gotta export. Let's call this. Cube pattern four. All right. So what does that do for us? We've essentially created a bunch of patterns. But what's that do? We're gonna get to this guy in a second. Uh, but first, we're going to open all of our cubes that we did. So we want this one. Take this one. Get our Japanese waves. And our cubes. We're going to open these. Right, and then we're gonna go new and create a new document, just like, a, let's do 2,500 by 2,500 pixels. And we're just gonna move Really, we're just scaling this down to a more manageable size because we're not working with vectors anymore. Okay. And now what we want to do is go to edit and define pattern. And we call this one Y turtle colors. And if you were here on our last stream uh, you would know that when we hit define pattern, what that does is it creates a texture for our brushes in when we are creating brushes. So let's turn this off for a second. Let's create a new layer. Let's get a brush, um, maybe like, just like this hard round brush right here. And let's start manipulating um, and adding some stuff to it. Um, we want, we want transfer on and we want the flow jitter. We want to make sure Windows Ink is enabled. That's better. Okay. And now we want to go to texture and under our little drop down menu up here, we can go find that pattern we just we just made. So why turtle colors? But you'll see it doesn't do anything. You're like, oh my gosh, this doesn't do anything. But we have to switch the mode from height to let's try subtract first. Cool. And now we have created this brush with this pattern, which is really cool. So I've been getting a lot of ads lately for pattern brushes. And I'm like, and people want me to pay like $30 for some brushes to add patterns to them. And I'm like, I can make my own. I don't need your money. But I do need water. Wait, I need their money, but they don't need my money. 
You know what I'm trying to say. I'm not trying to spend money on brushes when I can just make my own. This coffee's got me feeling weird. Maybe it's maybe it's the Oreos. So you can start going in and adjusting these. So I specifically made these uh, patterns to be a bit high contrast. Um, we're not really taking full advantage of it right now, but if I if I press really lightly, you can kind of see it. I want the top uh, L piece to be uh, kind of faint, and then the right L piece to be really dark, and then obviously the left L piece to be really white. Um, and you can adjust the contrast. If the contrast is uh, really low, it might be easier to do that. Uh, you can also adjust the brightness. That will also affect how these the contrast of these shapes are put down. But what I really like is we can also go to the color dynamics and let's pick like a dark purple and we'll do this light blue. And if I press really lightly, it's gonna give me purple. But if I start pressing harder, it's gonna give me blue. And so this can give me like a nice gradient effect, which I want to use later in our robot drawing. So I think this is this is pretty wild. I might actually try to put the opacity on as well and do the minimum to like 57. Yeah, I'm into that. Maybe the minimum even lower. Awesome. Let's try another uh, one of our textures. We can save this brush. Let's call this Y pattern brush dual colors. Super specific. Let's try a different one. Let's try um, our Japanese waves. Now this one, you can see we already have a problem. Our waves are way too big. So what do we need to do here? We need to take the scale and let's move it down to like, yeah, let's go 50%. I think we can even go smaller than that. Let's go like 20. Yeah, there we go. So something you have to be careful about though is uh, these patterns um, will reach an edge. So right here we have like this hard edge and we have a hard edge right here. So that's like something to keep in mind as you're making these. Um, it's like really good to make your patterns on a really large document or at least document that is bigger than your drawing is going to be. So that way your patterns will never reach the, uh, the edge of the page. Abigail, thank you for joining the Twitch stream. I don't know if you are here earlier, but I've had so many technical difficulties. It's been a rough one. It hasn't been that rough. We're getting to where I want to be. And so I'm going to start drawing this robot soon. Uh, I just want everyone to say thanks for sticking with me thus far, if you have. I just really like how you can get like these really fun gradient effects. with these like really geometric and like hard lines like very vector style shapes let's see here that wasn't that wasn't the that wasn't the pattern that we made earlier that was like a different one that i made and i like this one better let's do that do this. All right. Let's go up to edit. Define pattern. We'll call this Japanese wave brown. Hit OK. Let's grab 
our brush. Let's put texture on it. Well, this is cool. The circles are so small. Oh, because... There we go. This is kind of what I want. This is nice, except I think that they could be even bigger. All right, now we're getting somewhere. Let's put transfer on. And opacity. Nice. All right. So now that we have the patterns that we want, let's let's apply these. Like, how do we make these? Uh, like, can these be cool? Can we actually use these? And that's that's what we're gonna test here. That's, mm, no, we don't want to save that. So we got a robot drawing here, and I want to fill this in a bit with some brushes that we made last week. So. We want to put like some organic stuff in here. Let's go. The sidewalk chalk one was pretty cool. Yeah, let's use our sidewalk chalk. Okay. I'm going to lock this layer and I'm just going to do some coloring. So, bear with me as I just try to make this look a little bit nicer. I'm gonna try to talk through as much of this as I can. But essentially what I'm doing is I am taking the color that's already there and I'm finding um, a slightly brighter version of that color and a slightly darker version of that color. And I'm trying to just give it a little bit more three-dimensional form. by adding some textures to make this a little bit more interesting. a lot darker. There we go. So 
up, right? I don't think I'm going to do much to this thing. That doesn't need anything. His head, though. His head needs some love. So something I want to do with the face, if you double click on your, on a layer, you get this dialog box and what we could do, because his face is a screen, we could do an inner glow. And you wanna do the blend mode to screen, I'm pretty sure. Put the opacity up. Oh, that's what we want. Let's do the, make the inner glow like a really bright neon. This isn't going to make a much of a difference, but I feel like when we do the blue part of his face, right now I'm only doing his like eyeballs and his little mouth. And we can mess with this a little bit. Here we go. You can s start to see what this does. And I just want to give it a little bit of a glow. And maybe a little bit of a choke. Yeah, that looks good. Now let's do the screen, do that same thing. Give it an inner glow. Do no choke on this one. And we're also gonna give this one an outer glow. But I don't think this is gonna work because it's on a layer lower than our screen, so I'm not even gonna worry about that. Whoopsie daisies. Put that inner glow back on. Yeah, that looks good. Krantz Pib, thanks for uh, joining the the chat. As you can see, like this is our third malfunction of the day. Uh, Photoshop has crashed. Let's sure we'll send that crash report. 
Photoshop is usually pretty good about saving things. We'll see what happens. Okay, all right. All right, thank you, Photoshop. Like, pray to the Photoshop gods. Like, I think it's saved. I'm just gonna hit Control S and save that again. Cool, all right, we're good, all right. <laughs> This is fun. I'm having a good time. Cool. I have a bunch of like little lights like on the robot, and I want to give those uh, a slight glow to them too. Uh, let's go outer glow. Let's do. Let's give it a blue light. I'm having the best time. I hope you guys are having a good time. I think what, what really needs to happen, we need to change up the music. This is just like bumming me out. Let's go. We went synth wave last time and it was, it was crazy. We're gonna get crazy again. All right, we're in the home stretch here. Like, thank you everyone for sticking with me thus far. We, we're almost there. All right, let's do that grass. Let's find our sidewalk chalk again. And I added a transfer to that, and I just hope that it sticks with it. Cool. Now I have two layers of grass here, and this is gonna look a little wonky for a second. But I have essentially a layer of grass below our robot and then a layer above. So uno momento. It's gonna look weird for, for half a second here. Oh yeah, this is the energy we needed. It's a free music life. Where's that other grass? Grass in front, here we go. So now we just need to blend the top grass with the below grass. Here we go, looks pretty good. Let's do that background. Let's hit G. What color should we have this background? Let's let's experiment. Let's. I don't think that's right. Let's do a yellow. Ooh, it might be yellow. It might be yellow. But not like an aggressive yellow. Let's try this like orangey. That's too much. We've been using pretty soft, like, dulled colors through this whole thing. I think we should keep that kind of consistent. What's purple like? Purple's... Purple's not bad. We're up to nine people in this chat right now. Thank you so much, everyone, for sticking with me. We've had some technical difficulties. This has been a day. But I got to ride my bike today. Um, I had some struggle with a bike pump. Me and, like, ooh, actually, I think I found the color I want. Let's do that. My bike pump was just 
Uh, we had some fighting words, but I finally put some air in my tires and I got on my bike. That was really nice. I haven't done that in a few weeks. Yeah, a few weeks. All right, let's go to our hard round brush. Maybe hard round opacity brush. Let's try that. Yeah, that's what we want. And let's put that texture on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Texture, texture, texture. Um, let's see. I really liked... Let's try the cube pattern. So what I want to do is... Do a dual... Not dual, but color dynamics. And... I want to get white. And I want to get a slightly darker version of our background. So, that doesn't work. It's because we need to go to our texture, we gotta go to subtract, and we gotta put the scale down a little bit. Just a little bit. We're gonna put the contrast down a little bit. Let's do the scale down a little bit more. Yeah, this is it. We're getting there. Um, let's go to put the spacing on 2%. Let's try this. So if I press really, really lightly, it's gonna give me white. And if I press down harder, it's going to give me Let's make the, our brush really big so we can kind of see what we're doing. I want, essentially what I want is like right around the flower, I want it to be really bright. And then I kind of want to fade it. This is getting pretty wild. I think white is gonna be too much. Let's change that white to like a yellow. Do a brighter yellow. The skin weird. I'm going to turn off the color dynamics for a second. I think this is what I want. I was getting I was getting too complicated with the color dynamics. That's pretty cool. I like that. Too dark on the green. <laughs> Thanks, C Diego. Preach. Always always good criticism. Let's change the texture to that like crazy pattern we had yeah I think this is what we want. Just gonna save this brush. And I'm just gonna go get a really simple brush and I'm going to 
That was too much. That was too much. It's doing anything for us. Just gonna get rid of our texture behind our flower and I think I'm gonna make it a little bit brighter. Maybe turn down the opacity a little bit. I'm gonna put a filter on this, a levels filter. I just kind of want to see what this looks like. I don't really have many black, much black in this. I have like his uh, little fingers, which maybe I should add some more black. His fingers kind of stand out a little bit too much now that I'm looking at this So, But I want to just bump up the contrast a little bit and see what that does. I like that. Let's change the color of his fingers. take this pastel brush and do that. I'm like so afraid this is gonna crash again. Keep saving. That's a little bit better. Just doing a couple more tweaks on here, then I'm gonna call this done. Up to 14 people, it's pretty great. How's everyone doing out there? I'm drawing a robot, thanks for joining if uh, you're just getting here. We we'll turn down that texture in the background. Oh, just a little bit. What am I doing? I want to find, there's so many layers going on right here. So I want to make his body a little bit darker. Just add a little bit of contrast to things. And where are his leg layers? How are we looking? What do we think? Face. I think I actually want to take this inner glow off the face and put on an outer glow. Just a little bit. And I want to make his face a little bit brighter. Maybe I'll just do white, honestly. Nah, give it some color. His face is like super weird looking. It's not the easiest to read. I'm gonna make this eye a little bit bigger.
think if I make this eye a little bit smaller, it might be a little bit better. I think we're just about done here. Um, I'm I'm liking how this is turning out. I think I'm gonna tweak a few more things before like calling it done and posting it to the Instagram. Um, you can follow my Instagram handle. It's uh, Chris Diego Art, and obviously you should follow the Wacom Experience Center because that's why we're here. Um, and that's just you know the Wacom Experience Center, the one and only. thought I was done. Turns out I wasn't. It's like always like so many little tweaks you can make. First, have you ever heard the saying like art is never done, you just stop working on it? I think that's true. Let's do these, make these this color. Thought it'd be kind of fun to like pull little holes in the bottom of his shoes because like that's obviously where his rocket boots like the fire comes out of his rocket boots obviously like in that like in that And now I think we're done. Cool. So uh, hopefully you got something out of this today. Made uh, some pattern brushes uh, with out of in Illustrator, and I think that's something that I'm gonna do more. Um, make some stipple brushes in Illustrator, and make some more like Japanese wave stuff. You can also make like organic stuff. Like if you drew some flowers in Illustrator, you can repeat those patterns as well. Uh, so I think that's something like I definitely want to experiment with more um, and integrate those patterns into my Photoshop illustrations. Um, it's like just all Adobe stuff. It's pretty great. Let me switch over to OBS. But yeah, thanks everyone for joining in. Much appreciated and sorry for the technical difficulties today. We had uh, OBS crashed and then Illustrator was being really weird. Uh, so, and then Photoshop crashed. So all the things crashed. I don't know. Uh, I gotta do some updates or something. But I appreciate everyone for sticking in there. 
Um, and I just want to thank the Walking Experience Center for hosting me on this, and thank you to our moderators, uh, Megan and Carter, for you know making sure the chat is all PC. Um, but yeah, thanks everyone. Really appreciate it, and we'll see you next week with longer hair. One day I'll get a haircut. And um, yeah, thanks everyone. Really appreciate it.